Okay, YouTubers, here we go. Tesla Powerwall. Powerwall 2. This is for the normal people who don't have the Yahoo equipment and the special sign boxes and have installers do all that stuff. Uh, they never show you what it's all about. So here is the Tesla Powerwall gateway. That's about what everybody shows you. Oh, there's the gateway. Well, that doesn't tell you much. So here we go. That's the interior of it. That's where usually people go, oh, that's the inside. No, this is the inside. I'm going to take this off for you. Oh, there goes my little cover. I should have kept that on there one screw. So, anyway, that's the interior, okay? And then, on top of that, they have the safety panel cover. Covers your hot legs and cold legs. So, this is the real guts of the Tesla Powerwall. So for the guys that are thinking about installing it or having it installed, this is what in the details. So this is utility feeds from the outside world. I'll show you what I had to do. This was my 200 amp panel. Unfortunately, I have a whole house. This is a utility feed coming in, out the conduit. I routed it over, back down. It feeds the Tesla Powerwall. Now they have a real simple setup here. Top is your feed, common. This is your little meter box for your Wi-Fi that talks to your cell phone. It gives you all the information. All right, that's part of their Wi-Fi, their circuit board, the whole nine yards, communication cables that go all the way out to the batteries right here. Then you have load center. Two branches for each load center. So I do have two panels. I have a 200 amp there. And then having a full electric house like no one else out there, I guess, with two electric cars also. That is two panels. Then I ran a second one to feed the lower portion of our basement because I do all electric floor heat and everything is electric here. You name it, it's all electric. There's no natural gas. Uh, there is natural gas backup, but no natural gas, no oil, nothing else. So there you have it. There's your feeds from the utility. Connecting to the feeds going to... One breaker box over there. The other ones go through the tube. They go down through the conduit. They come back up through the conduit here. Come up the side of the box to the top, feed my panel. This down here is a 100 amp feed from the shed. That's for three power walls, which I only have two right now. And this is the solar coming in. This is the solar monitors. The little cords that tell you how much power your solar is producing. I've got my shed solar. And I've got my house solar. I have two units, one on top of my house and one on my shed. You'll see the one out in the shed here shortly. Everything else, uh, as you can see, a full electric house. There is basically all twin 220 breakers, floor heats, electric hot water heaters, electric dryer, electric stove, blah, blah, blah. So that's all the power. This is primary setup for my kitchen stove because I had to pull a 60 amp breaker off of that. And then a bunch of heavy ones down here for the other stuff that I'm going to be pulling off here for floor heats. All going to be 220. So now we're going to take a walk outside and I'll show you what the power walls are looking like when they're hooked up and what that's all about. My power walls are at their farthest extent, 155 feet from these panels. Conduit runs 137 feet underground to my shed. So we'll take a walk out there and we'll take a look what the rest of the setup looks like. Yep. Whatever. Alright, so outside, walk back to that's a floor solar setup right there. Is 25 panels, 315s, 325s, and then 335s on the ends. Uh, we also have 30 panels under house, 12 in the front, 18 on the top, all south facing. So the solar or the power wall feeds for the batteries, 137 feet underneath. Yes, those are my four beehives. I am a beekeeper on the side. They come up here, they feed into a junction box right here. You got the comm cable and then you have your power conduit. We'll walk back around the side here. Inside the honey shack here. Come in with our power comms 
This is power and com coming down to your power walls. Yeah, this is the ones that they look like. I can sign my own power walls if I want a signature on them. Uh, unlike the uh, pretty boys in Colorado that really don't do anything except get stuff free, I guess. So here you go. I plan on having two power walls, but my electrical needs far exceed that. So I'm saving up for my third one. And after I save up my third one, I'll get the fourth one. So it's setting up for three. Right now, I've taken, I always, I always oversize the wire feeding for power or feeds because you don't know in the future what you're going to do. Well, guess what? I planned on two. That didn't work out. I have to go for the loads amounts to get from sundown to sun up here in New Jersey. Uh, usually sundown is around 5 o'clock, 4.30 sometimes, all the way till 8.30 in the morning till the sun's strong enough to kick the solar on. So... The downfall, or I should say limitation, I guess, the, whatever, it is the limit. Power walls only put out 30 amps, so each battery pack is fed by a 30 amp breaker. That's one battery pack, two battery packs, the third one that's coming. Okay, so I have number two wire that I fed the shed with. That takes up to 110 amps at my run at 137 feet. So I can push back 90 amps through 110 with no problem feeding or returning. So... That's the setup. So each battery gets 30 amps, two-in pole breaker. And then you got your comm that ran from the house all the way out here, 137 feet to the side of the shed. And this is about 150 total. Now it comes down to your number one battery pack in here. It's the same thing as this. So I didn't take the second cover off for you. That's basically what it is. It's a sealed unit. This is a $150 piece of tin slash magnetic little cover it's just basically uh cam locks twist that hex head cam lock locks the two between the two units spreads them apart this one's mounted to the wall oh you're not going to see it in there it's a bracket that you just put on the wall okay so you come in with your 30 amp wire right here hot and cold pretty much hooks into the connector they give you which is small 10 little gauge wire i guess uh braided wire so i soldered these two together with these so i have solder joints the com wire this is their junction wire they give you it's a whip it goes from here back over to here to this side so it's a whip that's about you know whatever 10 12 inches long your last power wall gets a stub with a little diode i guess a one-way diode back feeds I don't know if you can see that way in there, the top one. That's the end one. If I had a third power wall, I have to run the com wire from here, back through here, across here, back up the conduit, out the box, over to the third power wall, which will sit where my lathe is. Uh, my next two power walls will sit right there. So this whole bench and everything is going to be removed and moved over. I will have the third one hooked up to these for the com wire. Unfortunately, the com wire will feed the fourth one, but the power for the fourth one has to be fed by my other box. I only have enough a 60 amp box over there that can fit that to feed back to the power to the house. So, sort of splitting the power uh, routes there, but this one I just installed. So this is basically brand new number two wire going back to the house and that's about it. So this is the nuts and bolts of an actual power wall. That's their coolant. Little radiators on his, on the tops. This is a little thermostat couple. Pretty cheesy made. I think they should have done a little bit better on this. It's, a friend of mine said his was just hanging there too. Uh, it's just on a little plastic stub. All sealed. Exterior for outside. You basically can't get any better than this. Uh, two power walls. You only get uh, whatever it is, 13.5. So you get 26 out of these things. Both green lights, on and off. I didn't pull the plastic off for you. There's nothing there to see. It's basically a sealed unit, and that's it. So you got the top on and off switch for there. And you got your breakers to kill the power to them completely. And that's all for the power wall. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or uh, whatever. And uh, that's how you actually do a power wall install. And that's the nuts and bolts of it. So you can actually see. Like I said, these are 13, whatever they're rated at, 13.5 or something like that. Uh, so you got like 26 kilowatts power. 
I need probably about 40 to make it through the night with a full electric house. So, like I said, number three and four are going to be sitting over there. I have two electric cars, which no way in heck can you charge a Tesla Model 3 or the Toyota RAV4 uh, Tesla that's uh, made by Tesla. So, that would just drain your batteries. Bang. That's it. So, you need a lot of power if you're doing a full electric house or going off-grid. When the sun comes up, they do recharge pretty quick. On the average, it's probably about four hours, four and a half hours on most of these for these two. So my solar during Superstorm Sandy was completely useless because during Superstorm Sandy, all that solar there and all this solar here was just sitting, standing by. I had a natural gas generator powering the house, but that's no big deal. Got rid of that, went with the Tesla Powerwall. So... At night, electric floor heat, hot water heaters for showers, dryer, cooking, will suck through 26 kilowatts in a heartbeat, and it goes really quick. So, power out type grid situation, you would conserve during those times and only use the stuff during the day when the solar's fully charging your batteries and you got power to the house. So, you have to modify your living. Any questions, just give me an email back to the website.